Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. In this part of the tutorial series in which we are learning how to create a Firebase Firestore chat app, we are gonna learn how to send image messages. So, in the previous part we sent text messages and in this part we are gonna send image messages by clicking this image icon, this floating action button, and we can select an image, for example this Magnolia, and we are gonna send it and yeah, after a while, it's right over here. But before we can do anything with sending the image messages, we first need to fix Firestore Util. As you can see, we have a bunch of errors over here and that is because I updated the Firestore libraries of the camera. So now there is a new version. That version is version 15, as you can see here. And this version 15 of Firebase Firestore changes some things in the API. Basically what it does is that now document snapshot is not non-nullable but it's actually nullable as you can see by this exclamation mark after document snapshot. And also this query snapshot is also nullable. The simplest way to fix these errors is to put a non-null asserted call. This for each has also a problem because it thinks that we are returning a boolean because this items.add function returns a boolean. So what we need to do to fix this is to return simply from this for each. And now we are good to go. As I've already said, this document snapshot is now nullable. So again, non-null asserted call for this. Or actually not for this, we need to assert that this to object what returns this to object function call is not null so we need to put two exclamation marks after to object call and now we basically have the same kind of errors over here also so two exclamation marks and then also non null asserted query snapshot and then one last error two exclamation marks and we are good to go in firestore util now we can finally create an image message under model. So new Kotlin file or a class. It's going to be a class and it's going to be an image message. And let's take a look at text message. And as you can see, it's basically a data class text message. It contains a text and a default constructor and it implements message interface. So we can pretty much copy all of this and paste it inside image message. All right, it's gonna be an image message, not a text message. It's not gonna contain a text, but rather an image path, but it's gonna be of type string. Then it also contains time, sender ID and type because those are overridden values from the message interface, which declares them. The default constructor can stay as it is, but we need to override one thing. And that is that the message type will not be text, but rather image. All right, now we have text message item, which you can see here, and we also have a layout for that, which is located under res, layout and item text message. We need to do something similar for image message. So first, let's create the layout. So new layout resource file, item image message. I'm gonna paste all of it in here and walk you through it. The frame layout and relative layout have the same functions as with the item text message which is basically that we can alternate the sides of the message. When it's sent by us, it's going to be aligned to the right. And when it's sent by the other user, it's going to be aligned to the left. Then instead of a text view, which contains a message, we have an image view with an ID image view message image. It has a layout width 250 dp, which is also its max width. And its min width is set to 120, which is pretty much the same as with the item text message. So as I am looking at this now, we can actually delete this max width and min width and nothing should really happen. Then a really important thing for this image view is that it has this scale type set to fit center and it also has adjust view bounds to be true. If we look at the documentation for adjust view bounds by pressing Ctrl and Q, we can see that it has this description. Set this to true if you want the image view to adjust its bounds to preserve the aspect ratio of its drawable. Which means that we allow this image view to expand or shrink in regards to preserving the aspect ratio of the image, which is pretty important thing. Then it has a placeholder image set in the tools namespace. 
And then we have text view message time, which is the same as in item text message. Now under recycler view item, let's create a new class. So new Kotlin file or a class is going to be a class and its name will be image message item. Again, let's take a look at text message item. Other than this lint thing, which says that we should generate a hash code function, which we are going to do now by pressing alt and enter and then generate hash code. All right. The hash code function looks something like this. But besides that, inside the bind function, we are calling set time text and also set message root gravity. We are going to want to set time text and also message root gravity for both the text message item and also image message item. So it's a good thing to abstract that somewhere else. And that is precisely to an abstract class message item. So let's refactor this thing. We are going to create a new class message item. It's going to be an abstract class. Every message item holds a message. The image message item holds an image message and the text message item holds a text message and they both implement a message interface. So the message item will hold simply private val message of type message. Message item will inherit from item. Now we can go to text message item and copy private fun set time text and also private fun set message root gravity. We can actually cut it from here and paste it inside message item. Now we can override bind function. And from here, we want to call set time text and pass in the view holder and also set message view gravity and also pass in the view holder. Now let's get back to text message item. We want to delete these two calls and rather call super or actually not yet because we need to inherit not from item, but from our beloved message item. And we want to pass in the message in the constructor. And now we can actually call super dot bind. It shortened our code quite a bit, didn't it? Now we can delete all of these unused imports by pressing alt enter and optimize imports. Now let's get back to image message item. The primary constructor will contain val message of type image message and also val context of type context. It's also going to inherit from message item and pass in the message. First, we want to override get layout. And from here, we want to return. So equals and R dot layout item image message, then override bind. We want to call super dot bind. And then we are going to again use glide to load the images from the Firebase storage to the image view. So we want to write glide app with context load storage util and we want to convert path to reference and the path is message dot image path then we want to define a placeholder which will be r dot drawable dot ic image black 24 dp and we want to load this image into view holder dot image view message image pretty simple right now let's also implement is same as and equals functions so let's copy them from the text message item. So copy and also the hash code, we will copy that. And then we want to paste it inside image message item right below get layout. We're going to replace text message item in here with image message item and also in the equals function. And now we are good to go. Now let's open up chat activity inside the uncle listener for the fab sent image. We have a to do to send image messages. We are going to do it in a way which is pretty similar to how we set the profile picture of the user. So if you want to get a full and in-depth explanation on how to work with images, you can watch my previous part and it's the second part of this tutorial series. Now, without any further ado, we want to define an intent, which will be equal to intent and we want to apply some things on it. Its type will be image slash an asterisk and an action will be intent action get content and then to this intent we want to put extra under the name of intent extra meme types and the meme types will be an array of image slash jpeg and then image slash png finally we want to start an activity for result and the intent will not be simply this intent but rather intent and we want to create chooser the target intent is the intent which we have defined above. 
and the title will be select image. And we need to put a request code over here, so let's define one. Up above, we wanna define private const val rc select image. And it's gonna be, for example, two. Now let's scroll down, and this rc will be applied here, so rc select image. Now we want to override an activity result, and here we wanna check if request code is equal to rc select image, so if it was called from here and also if result code is equal to activity that result okay and also if data is not null and data is this intent which is passed into an activity result and then finally if data that data which is the actual data from this intent if that is also not null so not equals null we want to proceed the data of the intent is the actual selected image path so selected image path is equal to data dot data then we want to get selected image bitmap which we can get by calling media store and then we want to get images and then media and finally we want to get bitmap from content resolver we are gonna use this and the path is selected image path it's not a path, but rather an URI, but that's pretty much the same thing. Then we want to somehow convert that bitmap to a byte array. So let's define an output stream, which will be equal to a byte array output stream. Then we want to compress the selected image bitmap. So selected image BMP compress. The format to which we should compress it is bitmap, compress format, and it's JPEG. The quality will be 90 and we want to output it to the output stream. Now we want to get the actual bytes of the image, so val selected bytes, or image bytes, so that it's more clear, and it's gonna be equal to output stream dot to byte array. Now we want to upload this image to cloud storage, so we want to write storage util, and we want to upload, and we only have a function for uploading the profile photo, so let's go to storage util, Copy the function for uploading profile photo, paste it below, change it to say upload message image, and it's not gonna upload under profile pictures, but rather under messages. So each user will have a directory messages in which all of the images from the messages will be stored. Now let's get back to chat activity, and here let's call upload message image. The image bytes byte array is selected image bytes and if the upload of the image is successful we want to instantiate an image message which will be saved inside message to send and this image message will contain the image path which we got from cloud storage inside here this is where the image is actually saved inside the storage then for the current time we want to call calendar dot get instance and then time the sender ID can be gotten by calling Firebase auth, get instance, and then we want to get current user, and we want to get the UID, and we don't actually need to explicitly define the message type, because it's defined inside the image message, it's an image. And after we have the message instantiated, we want to send it, so we want to call firestoreutil.send message, and the message is message to send, and the channel ID is current channel ID, which we need to define. So let's scroll up, and as a first thing, let's add private late in var current channel ID of type string. And inside get or create chat channel, we are passed a channel ID, and we wanna write that current channel ID is equal to channel ID, which is passed into here. And if we scroll down now, we can see that we don't have any errors when we are sending image messages. We have one more thing to do in this tutorial and that is to edit Firestore Util. Over here we have a to do to add image message. Here we can copy the line above, paste it inside the else class, but instead of text message item we want to instantiate image message item. And the class will not be text message but rather image message. Awesome, now let's test this app inside an emulator and let's send an image to a user. 
So we can still send normal messages. Hi. That works all right. But we can also send image messages now. So let's again send Magnolia here. And after a while, there will be a Magnolia image. If we come back from this activity and again send images or messages to Ludovic, you can see that it's still in here, so it works nice. Just for the sake of it, let's send another message, image message, and it's cool. As you may expect, that's it for this tutorial. If you don't want to miss the next part in which we will be working with Firebase Cloud Messaging, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button so that you are going to be notified about all of my new videos. If this tutorial helped you with sending image messages, give this video a like and also share it. As always, to get the code written in this tutorial, go to the link in the video description, which is gonna take you to resocoder.com. If you have anything to say, leave a comment, leave a suggestion or a question, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.